Hey guys, Reed with Work Turbo, and welcome to another tech episode with me. Um, as a follow-up to our external wastegate uh, simplified vacuum line hookup <laughs> from a few weeks ago, I figured I would go to the next step and show you guys how to integrate a simple air-regulated boost controller into your external wastegate system. Um, this is also going to explain, obviously, how this setup works. On the table, you guys see a bunch of stuff, and I will go over everything in detail, so hopefully it will make sense for you. If you have any questions, obviously, drop them in the comment section below, and I will be happy to answer them. All right, so on the table, we have a compact version of your pneumatic control for your boost system for your wastegate. All right, so obviously we have the turbo right here. As you notice, it's not hooked up, but we're going to use our super imagination right here. This is a regulated air source, so this is just coming straight from my air compressor. But let's pretend that this is not hooked up to an air regulator, that this vacuum line would go to this first T-fitting straight from the compressor cover of the turbocharger. So what that right there will do is provide your pressure source. All right, so from your pressure source, you're gonna go through a T-fitting and then to the bottom port of your wastegate. Pretty standard hookup, just like we did to get just a simplified boost control. This vacuum line, or pressure reference line, is also tied into the bottom port of the wastegate. And it is hooked to this larger boost gauge right here. We are going to, if I can find my marker, simply call this boost PSI or manifold absolute pressure. So that large gauge will always represent your boost pressure that you are seeing in your intake manifold. Or at least what you're hoping to see in your intake manifold. We'll do some high-tech graphics right here. All right. The second smaller gauge it is also hooked up to the wastegate as well. It is going to the dome or the top side of the diaphragm. So this is going to represent our regulated amount of air that is going to be applied to the top of the wastegate actuator. Most of the guys in the race car world will call this dome pressure. We will also put regulated if that makes more sense because it's coming from the regulator. All right, to answer your question, why not the same gauges? Because we're gonna have some variance between the two. Well, I did try. Picked up some cheap parts store gauges because I thought having two that match would be great, but uh, here we'll cover that name up. Let's just say don't buy that brand. It's uh, <laughs> It got to 20 PSI and then stuck. The other one seems to be working okay, so hopefully we'll get through this test. All right. Let's get some stuff out of the way here. So right now, this T-fitting, which is coming from your, remember, from your compressor cover to the bottom port of your wastegate. This T-fitting, if it didn't exist, your manifold pressure would just blow the wastegate open once it overtook the spring pressure in the gate. So, seven pound spring, it's going to start to move at seven pounds. This one has a seven PSI spring in it, to uh, just to clarify. So... T-fitting 
regulator, regulator outlet to dome. What this is going to do is very, very simple. Right now I have this regulator closed, so it is doing absolutely nothing as you will see. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add some pressure to the system. We're going to say 10 pounds of manifold pressure. So we're going to just go over here, give ourselves 10 PSI. So all I've done is added 10 pounds out of the turbo or the manifold. To the bottom port of the wastegate. I've zeroed out my dial indicator. This valve has already started open. I'll close it so you can see. Let's see if I can get both of them in one shot there. Probably should have picked a better indicator with the dial on it instead of digital, but hey, this is what we got. All right, so at this point, Props to TurboSmart on how accurate that is. It's repeatable, literally within thousandths of an inch for pressure. <laughs> That's pretty good. So what happens if we take some of this pressure and we rob it and we put it on top of the diaphragm? Well, let's just introduce a little and see what happens. I'm going to bring this up ever so slightly. Probably should have adjusted this. These have a lot of dead dead turning space ahead of them, so there we go. So we're going to bring it up to one PSI by this gauge. Right. At this point, you can see that our wastegate closed again. So it pushed the valve shut, which gave us a larger number on the indicator. So what does that mean? Um, very simple. What we want to do is we want to adjust the pressure till this gets back to zero. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to add some boost pressure. Now this is going to happen automatically on the car. So there's nothing you'll have to adjust. This is a completely overshot it a little bit. It's touchy to say the least. But we'll get close. Say I'll get close. Of course, I do this on off camera a hundred times, and uh, I can nail it right on the head each time. Look at that. Perfect. So now you notice we have pretty close to 14 PSI of boost pressure. So by robbing a little bit of pressure here, applying it to the top of the gate, what you're doing is you're effectively pneumatically adding spring pressure to the diaphragm. It is making the resistance in the gate harder and harder to overcome from your boost pressure. So to get back to the same amount of travel it took us to get 10 PSI, now we have 14. All right, so what happens if we add five pounds? And remember this is a seven pound spring and I know that this is not scientific, so don't flame me too hard because uh, I'm not using the same gauges, but this is uh, going get, to get the point to you, I hope. So we'll add some more pressure to it. So back to zero. Now, as you see, we are basically touching 18, 17 PSI of boost pressure. So what's the trick with this? Um, there's a couple of things I've learned over the years. Number one, you want the lowest pressure regulator you can go by. This one just came from my parts house right down the road, and it is like a 150 PSI rated regulator. You want something that's a low pressure, so uh, something in the 
50 PSI or lower range as it's working pressure. And with that, you'll get more resolution out of it. Um, I do highly suggest setting up something on the bench like I have done here to calibrate it so you know. These sometimes will have clicks that you can that you can actually manually feel, like there's a detent where you raise it up and lock it. This one I think has it. Yeah, there it goes. So some of them are nicer than others. The ones that actually have a detent in them that you can feel, you can feel clicks in there. There's a brand I believe called ARO um, that, uh, that we've used in the past and it is really nice. But for an inexpensive way to control the boost on an external wastegate, or actually any two port actuator, even if it's an internal, is to hook it up this way. So to recap, pressure coming in, bottom of the dome like normal, bottom of the actuator as normal. Your base spring pressure inside is seven PSI for this particular one, whatever yours is. So we did not have any of this here, we just had this straight hooked up the actuator would start to open at that seven pounds. But we rob a little bit of manifold pressure, run it through a regulator, we regulate the amount coming out to the top of the diaphragm, or the dome as people call it, and by putting pressure here, you will offset the delta from top to bottom of, of dome pressure to, we'll call that the actuator pressure. So by doing that, it increases the effective spring rate inside the wastegate, therefore making it harder to open this valve. Think of this as an air spring on top. The more pressure you put on this, the harder it is to open. So the more pressure it is required from your manifold. So the turbo will continue to make boost until it can overtake the delta between the two. I know this is pretty rudimentary, but there's a lot of guys out there that you know have that are new to this and I'm going to cover as much of it as I possibly can starting with the basis uh, guys if y'all guys like this video please give it a thumbs up if you would like to see something else from me definitely drop it in the comments I'll be happy to cover any tech I can I've got a long list going right now and I'm gonna try to continually drop videos and provide y'all guys some insight so I appreciate your uh, your attention and I hope you guys have a uh, have a great day.